Hello everyone and welcome back to another Minecraft tutorial video. Today, we're looking at something a little bit different than our normal RPG command block series, uh, and also a little bit different than our command block tutorial series. I got a suggestion on one of my videos uh, from Riven Richia to see if I could make a video about making invisible command blocks. Now, I thought this was a pretty interesting concept, and while technically you'll always need to put a command block somewhere in the world, there are actually quite a few ways that you can make them pretty hidden from your players on your um, adventure maps or servers or things like that. So I thought, why not give it a shot? And if you guys have any other suggestions about videos or tutorials that you want to see in the future, make sure you leave them down in the comments below, and I will see what I can do to put them into a video. So, today we're going to be talking about command blocks. Now, I know we've talked a lot about syntax before, and most of my tutorials use probably too many of these, um, but what is a command block? Well, in Minecraft, it's basically just a way to execute a command that the player doesn't have to type in. You can execute them remotely, you can use redstone to execute them. Uh, they're really handy. You can chain them together to do all sorts of different functions. They are super, super nice. The issue that other players and myself run into is sometimes you don't want your players to see the command blocks you're working with. Sometimes you'd rather them be hidden in almost like an automatic game scripting thing rather than a whole bunch of orange cubes everywhere so the players know what's going on. Now, as far as adventure maps go back with command blocks in Minecraft, people have found ways to hide command blocks behind walls, you know, in rooms that players shouldn't have access to, uh, underneath complicated circuits. So I thought I would show you four different methods of quote-unquote hiding your command block or making them as invisible as humanly possible to your players. Isn't that right, Mr. Golem? Hmm. Yes. So, we're going to start with the most basic and the easiest way to hide the command blocks from your players, and that is, of course, physically hiding them. Uh, this is probably the oldest way to do it, um, and one of the easiest ways, but it's on a base-by-base -base scenario, so we'll see. So as you can see, we have our door guard over here, uh, and we have this very large, imposing brick wall that there's absolutely no way we can get over. Yeah, he's, he's just going to push me away from that. Um, so in an adventure map scenario, if you wanted a player to get past something like this, you could hide a command block. Now, if we look around, there aren't any command blocks that go on the other side of the wall. You don't see any. But here we have the wall control switch. So if I go ahead and flip this, you can see that the wall disappears. Now, I know what you're thinking. This is incredibly basic, and it is. I just thought it would be worth mentioning that this is definitely a way to hide a command block. You can just put them out of reach uh, of players to find. Especially like this, we have it a block deeper, the lever turns on, you can see it's just a very simple fill command here. Um, this way the players can't see what's going on, especially if they're in adventure mode, it means that they can't actually break blocks to dig around and try and find the command block. So that's the first method. It works only when you use blocky sort of builds, cubic things like houses, floors, stuff like that. If you're doing commands out in the open or in the air, it gets a lot harder to physically hide them underneath different blocks. So we will move past this one. Just keep in mind, there are always ways to hide command blocks beneath other blocks because redstone travels through an extra block. So that's the first way to do it. Now, the second way to do it, and probably the most versatile and useful, are distance triggers. Now, something that happens a lot in normal games uh, are when players enter an area, they'll have a trigger box that triggers something like a cutscene, a script, a battle to ensue. And that's exactly what we're going to be able to do with command blocks. We want to have an area that when the player enters, the command block will fire. Now, at first, this might sound a little complicated, but actually it only takes one or two commands. And I'll show you how it works. So you can see that we're just out in the open in this lovely flat village today. And oh, look at this. There's a little blue flower over here. Let's go ahead and sniff that real close and see. Oh, it responded, stopping to smell the flowers. You can see we actually got a tag added to us as well. Now, this is exactly what I was talking about with the distance trigger. So if we dig underneath this block right here, you can see that once again, the command block is hidden, but this time there's no lever, there's no button. It's just the command block itself. Now, the way this is working is we have a repeating command block right here that doesn't need redstone. It's set to be always active. And of course, it's set to be repeating on unconditional. Now, our first command right here, uh, we are setting, we are executing at the nearest player within two blocks. Now, this should be noted. This isn't just two blocks linearly. This is a two-block cube. So, for example, one block, two blocks, one block, two blocks that way, one block, two blocks down. It's this big invisible cube that this command block is checking every second, or every tick, rather, because it's on the repeat function. So whenever a player enters that radius, it wants to fire off that command. 
Now, just briefly, the reason it's not repeating over and over again is because this second command I actually have, we're adding a flowers smelled tag to the player, and this command block only checks if the player doesn't have any tag. Basically, that just means if the player enters the radius, the first time they'll get the little message pop up um, right here, stopping to smell the flowers. But as soon as they have that tag, the command block knows that player doesn't need to read the message anymore. It's really great for one-off things or for players re-entering different areas. You could always get rid of that second command block right there. Um, we just have a simple run message to uh, actually tell the players if they're smelling the flowers. So I know you might be thinking that that is actually quite similar to the first one, but I will raise two points. Number one, if you're worried about your players looking around or being unimmersed by redstone, you don't need redstone for these. It's just a distance trigger, so you don't need levers, you don't need buttons. It feels a lot more game-like when you're simply just walking into things and things trigger. And the second point is, in theory, you could actually have these command blocks really, really far away if you're really worried about hiding them. For example, if we were executing this command, I don't know, let's say 64 blocks up in the sky, there's nowhere to hide that, right? Our players are flying along or doing whatever it is we want them to do up in the sky. We could still hide this command block elsewhere, underneath that farm over there, under the ground. Uh, we could build a little bedrock cube somewhere else. And then we simply input the coordinates where we want the uh, command block to execute. So it doesn't have to be at the player, it can be at the nearest player or at the command block um, location that we want to input. For example, the coordinates 145, 3, 212. That way you don't have to have your command blocks anywhere near the player that's executing them as long as you have a relative sort of coordinate to input them and you know where the player is going to be, then that's totally okay. You can hide your command blocks wherever you want. So that was the second method, and I would argue probably the most useful method um, on almost all of my adventure maps and servers uh, and things like that. I put distance trigger command blocks everywhere. There's a whole bunch of criteria I add to them so players can trigger them multiple times, singular times, give them titles, give them tags. But more often than not, it's always a distance command block that's repeating. So the third method is a little more situational, and this actually allows you to put a command block anywhere you want. It doesn't have to be anywhere near the player. Um, as long as the chunk is loaded, for example, the spawn chunk, uh, you could hide this command block in. I'll show you exactly how it works. So these three hay blocks don't actually mean anything. As you can see, there's nothing under it. I was just putting them here to show where we were going to do the command. Um, you notice on the right-hand side of my screen there, I have a bread scoreboard. Uh, this is just a very, very simple scoreboard that I set up earlier, uh, which just uses the criteria bread eaten. Now, if you don't know how to make a scoreboard, I am going to make a tutorial video on uh, the criteria in a scoreboard and stuff like that. So if you're unfamiliar, then stay tuned for that video. But we simply have a scoreboard that increments by one every time the player eats a piece of bread. Now, by itself, that doesn't really do anything. We could keep track of how many pieces of bread a player eats. But if we use a command block elsewhere to then trigger something, you all of a sudden have criteria that doesn't even need to be distance focused. It can be anywhere on the map that the player activates this criteria, and you can have a command block do something. I'll just show you. We don't actually have to stand on the wheat. So I'm going to eat this piece of bread. You can see, oh, tasty, delicious baguette bread. And you notice in the chat, I've actually given myself one bread, and it's reset my bread score. Now, I didn't type anything in the chat, and there's actually no command blocks anywhere around here, as you can see uh, really quickly. That was just a hey to show you where the command was, uh, where I wanted to stand. The command block itself, I actually set up in this house over here just so we could stay close. But as long as it's in a loaded chunk, it can be anywhere. Now, what this command does, it's also a repeating command block, um, and it's saying give the nearest player with the scores of bread eat, that's the name of my scoreboard, equal to one, give them a piece of bread. And then as soon as we've done that, we want to say set all players with their bread eat score back to zero. This is so the players don't just keep getting bread over and over and over again as soon as they've eaten one piece of bread. But that's just an example command. You can do anything you want once the player has eaten that piece of bread. You could teleport them, you could give them experience levels. This just shows you you don't actually need a location for the command block. It can be anywhere as long as it's in a loaded chunk. And as soon as a player triggers a scoreboard criteria, then bam, you can execute any command that you want to execute. I'll just show you if we do it again. We can eat another piece of bread. I haven't changed anything. There we go. Another piece of bread. You can see it's gone up to three now. It's gone up to four. You can see briefly the scoreboard in the right-hand side does change to 1 when I eat it, but it's very quickly because we have the command block setting it to 0. So, those were a whole bunch of solid methods to hiding the command block, but sometimes it's really hard, depending on how long you have command block chains, to just get the players to not see it. So, for example, we have a little parade stand over here, um, but if we come behind it, you can see that there is actually quite a lot of command blocks that are just in the open. 
Now, sometimes this is unavoidable if you want players to interact with a piece of redstone, and because of that, it means all of the command blocks have to be right behind it. Uh, they get really ugly, the players can see them, and you don't want the players to see them. So something else you can do is not exactly hide the command blocks, but you can render them basically non-existent after you execute a command. Now, what I mean by that is we have a little parade float going on, and if I pop into these command blocks, you can see that we're just having some simple commands. We're summoning a cave spider right above this command block um, with no AI, so it doesn't actually run away. Uh, and similarly, we're spawning a whole bunch of different animals right above these command blocks. Nothing too complicated. But this last command block right here, we are filling these command blocks with grass blocks. So... As soon as we hit this button and spawn the animals, what should happen in theory is all of these will fire, and then right at the end, this command block will say, okay, we've done all of these command blocks up until now, so what we're going to do is replace all of these with grass, as if the command blocks never existed. So here, I'll go ahead and show you. So let's start the parade. I'll hit the button, you can see, oh, parade time, and everything triggers in the chat. Now if we come around the wall, look at that, we, we have a nice little random mob parade going on right here, they're all... They're all chillin', but there are no more command blocks underneath them. It didn't teleport the command blocks or anything like that. It simply replaced them with grass blocks. Now, I should warn you, this is really only viable for things that you want to happen once. Uh, really good for single-player maps, uh, or if you're doing a specific event on your server. Um, or if you have an on-off switch. If this button is the one to start the parade, and then you have another button in your like bedrock chamber of uh, admin powers that when you press that button it will spawn command blocks here 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 again um so almost like an on and off switch uh but that is another way you can just completely hide command blocks from players by changing their block type to be something else now similarly uh if you still want to use redstone and make it remotely what you could do is you could have a button in a single command block right underneath the button um, and what this command block could do, uh, similarly to what we just did, we will use the fill command. And let's say, just for example's sake, uh, we'll put a command block right here. So we want to fill this grass block with uh, redstone. So it's 152, 4, 237. So we'll do 152, 4, negative 237. And the same again. Now you could use the set block command, but I just wanted to keep it consistent by using the fill command here. Okay and we can do a redstone block just like that and we will say replace um so this is obviously for example we are imagining that this is all hidden right here to the players somewhere very far away it doesn't have to be anywhere near the players but what this is saying is let's say you have a bank vault right and you have a button to open up a safe right here now you don't actually want the command blocks to be behind the vault or in the safe door you want them to be elsewhere so instead you have this remote operating system where you can press this button and it will instead send a wireless redstone pulse over here where you can then have your chain of command blocks that will actually open the vault door or do whatever it is you need to do so for example if i just come in here and we will write say hi that's kind of my go-to test now if we press this button you can see uh, parade time was the other command block over there. You don't have to worry about that. But it also says hi, because if we look, it's actually changed this grass block to be a redstone block. Et voila, wireless redstone. Now that was just sort of a bonus. It kind of works off of the same idea as this fill command. So I'm still counting it as really only four ways to, to hide command blocks. But there you go. So there you have it. Four easy ways to make command blocks basically invisible. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, it's not going to be entirely invisible unless you change your resource pack to make command blocks something like bedrock or grass. Uh, you will have to put the command block somewhere down in your world. Now, you can kind of get around this with functions, but I think we'll save functions for a later video. If you're interested, there are lots of great tutorials about Minecraft functions on YouTube. But that is going to just about do it for this video. If you want to figure out how to hide your command blocks, well, there you go. Lots of different ways for you to figure out how to do that. And as always, thank you so much for watching. If you have any suggestions, remember to leave them down in the comments below for any sort of tutorials or anything that you want to know to happen. And it should also be noted, just as a quick uh, update, I have nearly finished the Mudkip Ninja community discord. Uh, so if you guys are excited to come and hang out and talk, ask questions about your Minecraft projects, um, and chat about upcoming videos, make suggestions, well, that should be dropping soon. So make sure you check the posts on the uh, channel description um, in a couple days or maybe a week or so, and that should be going live. So thank you all so much, and until next time, see ya!